ask you to spin a bar right now while you do it. Ah, uh, hold on, man. I gotta get it. Ha ha! Hold on. Justice, return home, back with, you know, where he belongs, Louisville, Kentucky, man. How, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. What's up with you? How you been, bro? Good, man. I moved into my new house. You know, I'm just, you know, getting things organized, I'm trying to, you know, stay busy with that. That's why I haven't been able to get it back on this podcast for a while now. But, right, you right. know, first episode back, man, I want to ask you, you know, how's coaching, man? I know that's what you do. COVID times makes things yeah. crazy. What's going on with that? Uh, well, I just finished up my second year being a graduate assistant in uh, December. It feels like a long time than that. But um, this spring, I've just been focusing on, you know, finding like a new gig and everything. But uh, right when COVID hit, everything slowed up. Nobody knew what was going to happen next. And like right now, you know, we're in the midst of, you know, is there going to be a season? Is there not going to be a season? So they don't exactly know where to delegate. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be a season? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, it depends on what type of ball you're talking about. If you're talking about NFL, yeah, for sure, because those guys got to get paid and they take care. Jobs, yeah, 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 like that's more so of a business. Um, college ball is definitely a business as, as well, but um, disguised as an educational program. So right. you think if they're not going to have students back in half the colleges, they're probably yeah. not going to have um, games. Yeah, they can't fill up those stands the same way. Like you know what I'm saying. So, uh. I think college ball might be a little bit more tricky, um, but if I had to guess, they'll figure out some type of way, or at least they'll try it first, and then if it fails, it fails. But I feel like they'll at least try it first and see and see what happens, because you never know. Yeah, that's going to make it hard on you guys. I mean, you're a coach, bro. Like, you're, you've been doing um, a lot of college coaching. You, you know, you played in college, uh, DB. You know, you have a lot of experience, and people like you, yeah, like you know, all that skill college. set, you know, you're not able to use it because there's no, the sport's not operating. Right. So, like, right. what you been doing in the meantime, you know? Uh, hobbies. Um, love to work out. Uh, try to get in the gym. On my best, um, I'm in the gym. Try to get in there, like, five times a week. Um, other hobbies. Love hooping. Yeah. Love going to a park, playing basketball. Uh, also... Uh, love playing Madden. That's probably my best game. So, yeah. if anybody want to play me some Madden for you know a little change, holla at me. And if you want to play uh, FIFA, play me. Uh, whatever. But <laughs> um, also uh, hobbies. I love uh, listening to music. That's probably a big thing of mine. Yeah, man. Like, um, who's your favorite artist? Uh, Aubrey Drake Graham. Um, <laughs> who's that? Drizzy Drake Rogers. Okay. Um, <laughs> Drake, yeah, you know. And he's from Canada. And how do you spell Canada? You spell Canada D R A K E. Okay, K E. For sure. Okay. I, I've been spelling it the other way. Uh, C A N. Oh, no, you've been spelling the wrong place. Yeah, I've been spelling it wrong. So, like, Drake, you know, I like him a lot to myself. Um, you know, Canada is a big thing for me. Like, I, you know, ever since my two friends moved up there, I've been adapting the culture. I, I yeah. love, like, I follow a bunch of Instagram accounts. Um, I highly recommend anybody go to Toronto. And I, I feel like I talk about it a lot. It's probably because I do talk about it a lot. And, uh, you know, Drake, you know, this guy can do any style. He can do yeah. Caribbean, yeah. you know, island music. He can do R&B. Word. Do it seems like every time he go on vacation, he come back with a new flow. <laughs> new so, accent, yeah. Yeah, so, like, like ain't no telling what his next project going to even sound like because, you know, um, based on, you know, when I first heard him from Best I Ever Had, and then, you know, that first, like, album, Thank Me Later, and then I tried to get, like, a feel for, like, the sound that it was going to be for, like, for instance, uh, Take Care, and then from Take Care, it went, uh, was it Views? No, it was uh, Best no. I Ever Had. Yeah. I'm not, not um, so far going home or whatever. No, no, no. The one that he's in the club. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. I'm going to forget that. Nothing was the same. Nothing was the same. Yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, and then nothing was the same to freaking uh, views. That was just... Big change. It's like R&B. Big yeah. change. Island, like, that's when you get like the first like real taste of like Island Drake, like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And um, views is probably my least favorite 
album or my least favorite thing out of Drake's total like discography, just because like I don't know, like I you know Forty, uh, you know his producer. Yeah, Forty. Yeah, he ranked Views as his his personal favorite album. Wow, that's and take care take care number two. That's interesting. And then he had like all the other ones listed below, but like I can see yeah. his own producer likes Views the most. I think Views had the most diversity as far as like R&B, right, right. Island, mm-hmm. rap. You know, he had a lot and of good features. And I can see that as being his favorite album, just because of like you know it's like you got things from different type of spectrums. Like you know you got Island Drake, you got rap Drake, you got a little bit of like I'm in mean, my feelings type of Drake. So I mean like you get like the best of like. Like a good mix of you get a, different you types. Get a, yeah, styles, it's like, like the, you know? the honestly, because everything's been building up. You know, even though you can say like, um, uh, "What a time to be alive" was like probably like a peak for Drake. I think yeah. that was part of the, the growing part of Drake. You know, not mm-hmm. everybody was like on board, but until he got views with a Hotline Bling, that song was yeah, one that of, was huge. When man. he made that song, everybody, that was huge. you know, you, you as a Drake fan, you might think everybody knows Drake. But yeah, uh, some people out there don't listen to him. And then right. he made like that a couple pop songs like uh, what's the other one uh, about love, fake love, showing yeah, fake, fake love, love to me, and then, yeah. and then Hot, Hotline Bling. Those two singles came out as like some of the biggest right. uh, singles, and that basically put him on the top of the game for and like, it's pop and rap. Interesting that you said that because I know anytime. Keep in mind, like my mom, she she's not that big into rap and hip hop. Right. Anytime she comes to me, was like, "Oh, what's that new song by so and so?" I'm like, "Okay, like, yeah, that must be a banger for her." Because if yeah. she's saying that, because she don't like none of that stuff, um, but but yeah, like she Hotline Bling, she she was like a fan right. of that, and so like I was like, "Yeah," I was like, "I can totally see like how how that was like." It, yeah, and, and from people, there, you know? like everybody's like, "Oh yeah, we've been telling you, like we like him a lot." And yeah, then, uh, and then since then he's. He's actually made one album, a Scorpion. Uh, he made that album more as a like get music out because he's trying to get out of that contract he was in. Yeah, right. So right. now, now this new upcoming album here soon. You know, I don't know. It's maybe summer, fall. It's probably gonna be the first album, like legit album, studio album. Yeah. Where it's fully in his control. He can do whatever he wants. Right, right, right. So I mean, he's all the music he's dropped recently, like Care Package, and then like the. Uh, the demo tapes or whatever mm-hmm. that was all from like a bunch of like old music or like yeah or right. like singles he had out there that was leaked mm-hmm. this next album is gonna be a legit you know fully produced yeah. album and we haven't seen that from drake it's in, gonna be crazy in a long man time. because like now he has all the infinity stones yeah, all, <laughs> all, yeah. He, all he needs to uh, yeah. do is k-pop I mean, yeah that, some that's Asian a great music. way to put it like he's out of the deal like you know what i'm saying like it's about to be his, yeah. like, his, his first album where he's just like him like you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. like he can like really do what he want to do so it's just gonna be interesting to see what he put together for everybody because i know um I know you stay on Twitter and you keep up to date with his leaks and like if you find something right, you send yeah. to me, if I find something I send to you. So and like the leaks sound crazy. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? The leaks sound crazy. <laughs> I you know, I was just vibing one earlier. Um it's called like Need Me or something, but but yeah, like like Drake definitely got something for us. He definitely got something for us. All I need, personal favorite, I mean all I need right now is Playboy Cardi to drop something too, but I, I don't know. Uh, if that's uh, don't even get me started on Playboy Cardi, man. I won't get into that. Well, I mean, like, look, man. I know, uh, I know, rap's a big inspiration for you. Uh, I've, I've been in car rides with your dad. You know, long trips. Yeah. I, I've, I knew you. I mean, I, I took his biology class. He played music in the car. I know that's a big inspiration for like him and as you as part yeah. of his family. So. All I got to say to that is, like, has that inspired you, uh, you know, to make music? Or, like, what do you want to do, like, in music? Because, like, I know it's a good way to express yourself. Uh, Yeah, like, you know, um, it's interesting. Like, music is nothing. Like, everybody thinks about, oh, like, like music this, music that. Because when you're in the shower, that's when you put on, like, some of your best concerts. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm talking everybody about. Everybody can sing in the yeah, shower. Yeah, yeah. Everybody can perform and sing in the shower and, like, even, you know, go off, off the top of the head and stuff like that. But... Like, uh, for me, like, I'm just constantly, like, well, well, growing up, my dad was in the choir. I don't know, I don't know how people know that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows that. Yeah. Know. So, so back when, um, I was in Colorado, um, my dad was always in the choir. You know, we was in church every Sunday. Church choir. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and he even got like a, uh, he got like a couple tapes. 
Honestly, Ooh. yeah, that nobody know about. We gotta leak that. <laughs> I don't know about we gotta that. Leak a, they gotta leak a single. But, but yeah, so like he got a couple tapes. Like it's not like obviously he ain't rapping like that in him. Yeah. But but like he he's hanging stuff like that. And I used to um I used to go to all like all the choir practices and stuff like that. I, I used to know all the jams. But um yeah, so I mean like I see uh, music like it's an expression. So like. Um, I I've been I've always been interested in music because I just feel like I need like a better outlet to like express myself. So like any so like for instance like anytime like a thought comes in my head or like something happens to me like I like I like jot it down as like a, right. a memo to like maybe you know just think about and, like go off of it like for like a future reference or something. But yeah, like I'm always just constantly like thinking right. about music. Honestly, Dane, I know uh, I've had you up here. We're looking to make a little EP album. <laughs> you know, I've been doing some uh, recording with some other people, but you're going to be one of the yeah. main, main people on there. You know, me as uh, on the side as a producer, I like to make a lot of music, and it's hard to find a good artist. But all I can say about you is we've done a little bit so far, yeah. and it seems like you're just willing to jump into it. Yeah. So uh, that's all I can ask. That's really good. Uh, you know, anybody yeah. who's, uh, you know, as a producer, I'm willing to work with anybody who's willing to do some vocals. So, um I'm always open to any like new people, but uh, you know, with that, you know, I know this is music, something you just kind of do for a hobby. Yeah, on the side. for sure. Like, but uh, with coaching, we we're talking about a second ago. I mean, what do you, what do you think the future of coaching is going to be? You know, are you going to be up in the kids' faces? You know, coaching them on, or like <laughs> you think it's going to be like man. some like type of weird stuff? Uh, like, be that's going to be interesting because I mean, me as a player. I could take all the harsh criticism. I could take getting cussed out, getting yelled at. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to keep in mind, like, my pops was a high school coach. So, I mean, like, yeah. when we all got it, I got it again when I when I went home. Yeah, or, like, the car fun. ride to and from the game. So, I mean, like, I'm used to that. Um, but you also got to think, I think the biggest thing for coaches is that you got to understand that not everybody responds the same way. So, um, I, you know, easier said than done. I really hope that I pay attention to my players and I figure out like the different type of like temperaments and how to best reach them as a player yeah. to get the best out of them. Cause you can't just yell at everybody and, and yeah. think that they're going to all, all, all respond the same way. Um, and, and like on the flip side of that, you can't pat everybody on, on the back, but like, oh, it's okay. You'll get it the next time. Or, or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Cause not everybody, that doesn't bring the best it's out got, of everybody. It's kind of like the old school mentality is like, yeah, for sure. A lot of people we played high school and with, um, you know, either they won't get in playing time or like they mm -hmm. felt like they didn't have a chance because the coach would just cuss out everybody. Yeah. And like, you know, uh, and like pressure them and like kind of like bully them. Yeah. Now some people that's kind of old school mentality. Yeah. Like you know you if you're not tough you're not gonna be good. Right. 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 Now like now as a future coach like I don't know if you're gonna have to like be really rough and yeah, in his face. yeah definitely and then yeah. a couple you're gonna be like hey it's okay you know? absolutely like, because they're soft absolutely and yeah, a lot like, of people a lot of good athletes quit in high school because of um because like they didn't they didn't yeah, know how to be like, talked to like yeah that. and like not everybody's built for it that's what they gotta understand just you know be honest with themselves about it yeah and I say that with love though I say that with love like like yeah. like you know like sports ain't for everybody but um but yeah like you just gotta. Know your personnel, honestly, and then and really know your players. Like you know, what I'm saying, um, I aim to be a players coach. Like you know, a coach that you know people can come up to me and like talk to me about anything, whether it's ball or not, because yeah. um, that's what I have found out about myself is that like I always prefer to coach that was like that. So I'm gonna try my best to emulate that. Like you know, what I'm saying, right? It's, you know, back in the day. Your dad, used yeah, to do some crazy like because he was our coach. You know, he used to do some crazy um, disciplines. You know, yeah. you mess up. You know, what discipline is going to do? Uh, what's some like? Uh, what's probably the most crazy like? You know, punishment, so to say, that uh, you ever seen back in high school? Because I probably was right there with you doing it. Yeah, for but, sure. I, there's too many to list. You know. So. Yeah, I mean. I wouldn't call it crazy. I would call it more of a uh, unique. Yeah, unique, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like unique because even even uh, playing ball for four years and then coaching it for two, um, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, but you know, in high school, the main punishment was worms. Yeah. <laughs> so like for those of y'all who don't know what like worms are, you gotta lay on your stomach. You gotta. 
um, hold your hands behind your back, mm-hmm. and then you got to literally inch yourself or like scoot yourself like a worm. Like straight forward. Yeah, straight forward. Not like rolling. Straight forward for a certain amount of yardage. And uh, the yardage all always varied based on the um, crime. <laughs> like, you know, Severity of the punishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, if you... Uh, we're late to practice. That might be a sixty-yard worm. You left. You left the locker room there. That might be a fifty-yard worm. Yeah, yeah. Man, you have bad grades or stuff. I may might be like a hundred-yard worms. But you know what I'm saying? Like it varied. Um, one of the funny stories about that actually. Uh, I'm not gonna put my teammate on blast. Like you know, it's like because it's all love. But you don't have the name, Jeremy. Yeah, but uh, one time it was after practice, and um, this was, this might be like the year after you left. So maybe I'm like my sophomore, junior. And, um, and so like we had a player do something that he wasn't supposed to do. And, and so he had warrants for an entire week, entire week after practice, he had to, you know, drop down after we broke it all after, you know, we broke the thing for then the practice and he got on his stomach, he started to his worms. And one day he was just complaining about something like, you know, like, oh, coach, this and that, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And like, <laughs> for all y'all who, who like know my pops, like, you know how he talks. So, so <laughs> especially when it comes to worms. So he was like, uh, <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> and then he said it again. And then he said, worms can't talk. They worm. <laughs> so like, you know what I'm saying? And then like, I will never forget that. And that, <laughs> like, and it's as funny for you, like for you and me, because like you know how we, like you know how he yeah, talks, and like you know I, I how he is. Yeah. So, so like it's it's hard to put into words exactly like how it was, but that's something that you know <laughs> me and you will always joke about, and like anybody that really played ball at Manuel, like 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 I will never forget that. I don't know how you can. Like as him as a person, how he can keep a straight face when he says the stuff he says. <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> worms can't talk. Get yeah, back down. I know, man. I know it. I know yeah, it. Then he did the uh, nah, he he did some uh, pregame ceremonial oh, dances. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, um, because you know, he's a proud Q. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah represent. Yeah, yeah. He got a rep. He like, like he he repping them all the time. Like he like proud too. But that's just how they are. Um, but but yeah, like he'll 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 do his cue steps. He'll do all that. Like you know, just really like he's really like personable. Like you know what I'm saying. Like and like he's he's real too. Like you know what I'm saying. You know what's what's real. If you if you want some money, what you could do is just go. Hey dad, I I'll buy you a podcast. Yeah. Anything you want, let's get that podcast started. Yeah, if that guy, if, if he would be more famous than Joe Rogan, man, he, he'd be more famous than like man. anybody has a podcast because if this guy starts talking, yeah, you know, unlimited yeah, stories. Yeah, nah, for real, like you might be onto something, dude. Um, because like he, he has so much, like it, whether it's funny or whether it's like about football, or yeah. whether it's about history in general. This guy can talk yeah. about anything for sure, and for it's sure. entertaining, and you for learn sure. something for sure. Like he's a um. Pretty <laughs> rounded guy, to say the least. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like he, uh, he definitely um, knows a thing or two about a thing or two. So, yeah. Like, if they the the one commercial with the the most interesting man in the world. Oh some, yeah. Some yeah, random yeah. white guy. Yeah. That guy's not interesting. <laughs> if you need to replace that guy for the, the yeah. as far as the celebrity for the commercial and put your dad there. Because yeah, that would. That's the most interesting man. In the I feel world. like that would do numbers though, honestly. That would definitely do numbers. My biggest regret, speaking on like the worms, beer was, cells would go out of the roof. Was like, so it was like my junior year or something, and uh, I was talking to one, one of my classmates about about like the worms. It was just like like somebody that didn't play on the team, right, or, or whatever. I was just talking to him about it, and um, they were like, "Yeah, you know, uh, I'll make your, I'll make coach a worm suit if you want," <laughs> and. And I was like, ah, uh, I was like, oh no! But, but my biggest regret was like, I didn't, I didn't talk to nobody else about you that. You didn't think about it. No. Yeah, I didn't think about how no. that would come out on the back end. So yeah, I, I was like, man, like, like I think about that often. Like, man, I should have really just had, uh, just went forward with that and uh, try to look into getting my dad Word a, man. Worm, a worm costume. Yeah, because he called himself the Worm Man. So like. <laughs> I mean, you like you just never know what you're gonna get with him. Yeah, and then you have all this stuff we just talked about him, all this history, and this guy was a my my 
biology teacher. Yeah. This guy, he taught yeah. biology. And he's yeah. just like, you know, I learned stuff from him, so I'm not, you know, degrading, like, his yeah. knowledge, because I definitely learned a lot from him. This guy would just start talking about random things about biology, yeah. and then we, uh, we'd start talking about uh, uh, human anatomy when it comes to, like, uh, uh, you know, how we operate, and then he started yeah. talking about pigs. And then one day he just brought in pigs for us to dissect. And then next year I was... Uh, his student teacher, and he didn't care. What he's like, you, you say, you're a crimson. You're yeah. a crimson football player. <laughs> you don't need to grade papers. Go to the library and enjoy your time. Uh, this guy, yeah. you know, he's cool. He can, you know, he, he always watch my watch out for my back and stuff. So yeah, gave me so many rides home. So I mean, how's that like? Uh, you know, influenced you? You know, are you like um, trying to follow up in, in any footsteps or anything? You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, with me trying to, with me pursuing coaching and everything. I used to hate football, bro. I used to I, I used to hate it uh, because when I was younger, growing up in Colorado and everything, um, I was always forced to go to my dad's high school games. Right. And sometimes, you know, during the summer when my mom would be at work, he would take me to practice to practice with him and everything. So I'd be at the football stadium all day. I used to hate everything about football, bro. But then. Uh, literally in the most like kid way possible. I started playing at recess, and I was like, "Oh, like <laughs> this isn't that bad. Like it's actually kind of fun." And then um, I signed up for my first year of playing ball, uh, fourth grade year, which is late for a lot of people. And like that year, I ended up breaking my collarbone. Unfortunately, like I don't know. I guess I wasn't built for it then. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So and then I don't know. Like my love for the game just kind of grew after that. Uh, high school, you know, freshman year, you know, went from doing like the bare minimum, mm-hmm. like a lot of freshmen do. And then, you know, it became, it became like more important to me. And then I was like, okay. Then, then college ball came. Um, and then it was about like my junior or maybe senior year playing college ball. And, um, and I believe I, I got hurt cause I always had some wrong right. shoulder. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so then I was forced to like really study like the mental aspect of it even more so than I had been already, and I was like, you know, like 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 I think I'll really like love this stuff. You have like, a passion for yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like if you have a love for something and yeah, you, know, you want to put work absolutely. toward that, that's a, that's called a passion. Absolutely. Like I I really started to develop a passion for it. So I was like, man, like you know, this is something that. Um, and then from then it was something that I started thinking about pretty seriously, and then um, the season. My senior season wrapped up, and then I just uh, talked to um, the head coach because we normally have, like, player exit meetings, like, you know what I'm saying? And then he was like, yeah, um, I'd love to have you on as a GA, this and that. And then, like, you know, that's where I, I really kind of start, mm-hmm. you know? But, yeah, so, I mean, like, definitely love it. Um, I love just building the relationships. I love being out there coaching, getting fired up about either a bad play or a good play, preferably obviously the good plays. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? You got to um, – the the bad plays can be unique because it's also good teaching points. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, I like just being able to just be not necessarily like a, um a authoritative figure, but being like somebody that people can count on. You right. know what I'm saying? Um, I, that's really important to me. I just got you, man. On and off the field. I got you. I mean, uh, I think it kind of fits your personality. Like, people can come to you about a lot of their problems. And uh, yeah. I think you can always give a sound advice on, like, what, I you, tried to. what you should do. I tried to. <laughs> yeah. Let the results speak for themselves. But, <laughs> yeah. but, like, yeah, I think I think as a you looking forward, you have a passion for football. You know, you, you, you're you your sure. free time. You're, sp- you're playing video games about football. You know, yeah. you're going to college uh, for football. I think you have. I think you'd be good as a you know a players coach and stuff like that. So, yeah, absolutely you, you appreciate right. that. Love, bro, love. Yeah, I know. Back in college, we all have a crazy stories. Uh, I was curious because you know we didn't go to college together. You know, we were really good friends in high school. We spent a lot of time together. Yeah. We kind of like you know I was a year older. I went to college. I went to WKU, mm-hmm. and then you went to like uh, Char- University of Charleston. Yeah, out of West Virginia. Yep. And uh, basically, we weren't able to spend much time together. But, right. Yeah, you know, I always remember of you is that we uh, actually got together and uh, every year for New uh, New Year's. Yeah. And we had uh, you know some. Uh, 
uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, New Year's was always a good time. You don't want to get too much in detail, but New Year's you know, always we had some people with us that were uh, that made it even better. And yeah. then, uh, you know, some of uh, I won't name drop, but one guy threw up in the car. Yeah, and, uh, wasn't me, by the way. Yeah, w- wasn't me. We're going to. Wasn't uh, me. Yeah, you know, we 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 were good. Yeah, we were yeah, watching our yeah, friends. Yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, so I wasn't able to spend much time with you. You know, we we're such good friends, but um, because of college, yeah, you know, different places. Schedules, like you know, yeah, bro. yeah. So like a lot of fun things talk happen in my yeah. college, but. Uh, I've talked about about that before. I'm really curious, you know, for you to tell me a story about college that you maybe have never told before, or I don't know about because um, I feel like out in the middle of nowhere, kind of like in the, you know West Virginia, you know, there's not much to do uh, out there. So y'all had to be pretty creative when it came to like. Uh, I'm trying to think of any crazy stories. I know there's a casino nearby too. Yes. Uh, Mardi Gras casinos on very, the payroll. I, I had a lot of um, happy nights out there and a lot of uh, depressing nights out at, at Mardi Gras casino. Just in your car. Yeah, just like in the parking garage. Why afterwards. did I come? Why did I play? <laughs> why, why did I keep jar from the ATM? <laughs> like, why God? Why? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, yeah, and it's weird because every time I walked out of there and and I lost like that, I would I wouldn't handle it well. Well, you're an athlete. You know, yeah. When you have the downs, he's like, yeah, How can I, I, get hand- I gotta get back in there. I wouldn't handle it well, and uh, there's a few recordings of me not handling it well leaving the casino. But um, I would say, as far as stories go, probably like spring breaks. The B5? What, what was the names? <laughs> yeah, uh, my friend group from college, uh, we. We have a name called B Five. Yeah, Shout these guys the, are famous. I, mean, I just brought it up. I, I knew about these guys. Shout out to the guys. Uh, you know, you got um, Jante, Zaire, Jalen, Eli, uh, Kylan. Um, even though he don't claim us, he's still and an, like an affiliate. <laughs> but you know, it's all love hood. We'll still count you as B Five. And then got my man Hayes and uh, Jordan Brown. Oh man, Jordan. and then we also got an intern. Oh, yeah, just it, working part time. <laughs> yeah, part time guy, part timer. His name is uh, Ray. Uh, he probably gonna kill me for saying that, but <laughs> but he knows his role and he played well. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it's all love, man. But yeah, um, so one year, um, keep in mind, like we we went to like the, our first few years going on spring break. We went to Panama like two or three times straight, right? Yeah. Two or three times too much. So first year, 2015, uh, we stayed in a uh, <laughs> we stayed in a motel. Oh. <laughs> we stayed in a motel, this, but this it, man didn't even get a hotel. No, nah, it he was a motel. a motel. And that was on me though. That was on me though. Of because it's on you. um because I stayed there the year before, like in senior high school? Yeah, yeah, like senior year of high school. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I had a great time. I didn't know what to expect. Like, so um, we booked it last minute, so we needed, like, a cheaper place to stay. So I was like, yeah, I know this spot. Like, I know this hotel. Um, and then so, like, you know, they all went for it. It's in that. And we got there, and it was, they're like, oh, this is a motel, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, but it was perfect location, though. Like, the living situation wasn't, you know, the best, but yeah. we made it work. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't spend that much time in the room anyway. But, uh and then, so one time when somebody was sleeping, like a roach, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, like a like a like a big roach, like was crawling on like the floor, like on like the wall next to somebody that was sleeping. And then, uh, like he like he like saw like I like a glimpse of his eye when he was like about to go to sleep, and then he jumped up, and yeah. then and then so from like that point on, whenever we talk about, it, we call it like the roach motel, <laughs> stuff like that. But probably, like, the funniest um, thing that happened was when we went to South Padre Island in, oh. in Texas. It's, like, the very tip. Yeah. Um, I think I've been there. Yeah. yeah so, one of our friends from With back... family, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of, uh, our, like, our friends from uh, Louisville, yeah. he uh, tagged along that year. Uh, don't even throw any names out there. You know what I'm saying? Wait, but, wait, wait who was yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, 
So he came with us that year. You know, I was, I was like, yeah, bro, like you got to uh, coming out with us. You know, spring break's always cool. It's always fun. Like you'll have a great time. Plus, you ain't haven't been nowhere yeah. like in that type of environment before. So like you'll, you'll definitely come. You'll love this and that. So keep in mind, um, <laughs> we're all like he doesn't he he's not accustomed to like how we vacation. Right. Yeah. So like like I think he's expecting like, you know. Go to the beach, just chill out. Go just to the re- pool, participate in yeah, hotel activities. Yeah, yeah, like and just like relax all week. Uh, you know, he learned quickly that that wasn't the case. Um, so keep so keep in mind, like bless his heart, he wasn't like as big of a drinker as all of us. Not saying that we're like you know, but yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, Fred like Rose. yeah, but we indulge from time to time. But yeah, so he wasn't like the biggest drinker. So we all um had like. Like lots of bottles and everything like that. So probably like the first night, um, we're all drinking about to uh, about to hit the beach. So like spring break schedule for like me and my friends, uh, we'll wake up, we'll eat something real quick, like nothing too heavy, like something you know, essential. Just yeah, 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 down. yeah, like something real essential. And then you know we'll pregame before we go out to the beach. And then continue to drink on the beach. Um, after the beach, we grab a quick bite to eat. And then we take like a quick power nap, no more than like one or two hours. Yeah, it's a limit. Yeah, yeah like just to like you know get your mind right. Essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. The night, yeah. yeah, and then we wake back up, and we start drinking again, and then we go out to um, whatever club that night, and we don't get back till whatever time in the morning. So uh, this was probably like the first night there. So keep in mind, he's not a big drinker. Yeah, twenty one at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, He's not a big drinker, so we we get him started. We're like, yeah, so and so, like, yeah, just keep, you know, like, we're all doing it, just, you know, like, typical, maybe like peer pressure and stuff, but we kind of tell you, like, we feel like force feeding it to him. But, like, so, like, he was trying to, like, hang. Um, I think he was more so trying to, like, impress, like, my friend. I, I'm like, yo, you, like, you know, you, like, like, just be you. Like, just be you. Like, you're cool. And then, so, uh, turns out we were coming back from the beach. And we realized that we haven't seen him since like a certain time, and we're like, "Yeah, it's been a minute." Yeah, yeah like keep in mind, like we're in Texas, and um, <laughs> I remember this story. Actually. Yeah, like you guys tell me this. Yeah, like we're in Texas, and you know, like <laughs> yeah, there were some racist. reports about people uh, getting abducted. <laughs> like, like you know, what I'm saying. So we were like. Uh, where is so and so at? Like, no, and they were asking me because you know, if like, anybody knows this guy, he can't get adopted. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's too strong. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, like, we were like, dang, like, where's so and so at? Like, <laughs> like, like, we ain't seen him in a minute. And then so, uh, so we tried calling him. Keep in mind, we later find out that he broke his phone like before he hit the beach, so we couldn't get a hold of him, and we're like. Hope he turns up like <laughs> like he's a grown man. So well, you like, gotta report him to the authorities. That was last resort. Yeah, that, yeah, that was last resort. But if we had to, of course, we would have. But yeah, so um, so we were like, all right, well, he'll figure it out. He's grown. So we prepare for the night like usual, <laughs> and then like yeah, I know it sounds messed up, but uh, we prepare for the night like usual, and then we go out. Um, you know, like we're we're drinking, we go out to the bar. Or to the club and whatnot, and then um, we go to Denny's afterwards. You know, yeah. just like to eat. It's like Classic whatever time in the morning. Like we're all just like exhausted from like the day, and then um, then then here he comes walking into Denny's with like two total strangers, and like we're obviously kind of like impaired at this point, and we're like, "Yo, isn't that so and so?" And then they looked at him. They're like. Nah, that ain't you know, it can't yeah. be, it can't be, it can't be. And then uh then like wait, hold up. <laughs> like, yeah, it is like yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um the two strangers were where like they were like, yo, hey bro, like it, like aren't those your friends? They keep saying your name and then <laughs> and then he turned around, he looked at us, he was like Nah, I don't know them. Oh. And then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. like he was just like that out of it. He was like this nah, dude. I don't know them. And then, so then we finally like went up to him. He's like, "Oh, yo, okay, what's up? What's up? What's up?" Mm-hmm. So it turns out this dude obviously had too much to drink. He passed out on a bench in like broad daylight, 
And then, like, these two boys who he walked in with walked up to him, and they were tapping him, like, hey, bro, <laughs> um, cops pulling up. He about to come get you. <laughs> and then, so he sobered up real quick, and he was like, all right, let's go, this and that, this and that. So I don't know. Maybe he was so drunk, he thought the people walked up to him were you guys. And that's and that's a, that's a high possibility. It's a hypothesis. That's a, yeah, that's a high possibility because, um, yeah. So like 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 I said, he had trouble like handling his his alcohol. Yeah. So uh, well, she's he's re- shown us repeated multiple. Times. Yeah, 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 repeated offender. Yeah. So yeah, so like um, he's doing forty years. So yeah, so like we get to the Denny's and he's telling us like yeah like um they just they just came and grabbed me off the bench this and that and blah 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 and then um we're like whoa like. Like, where you been at, bro? And he's like, oh, yeah. bro, I was passed out, this and that. And i like, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know where you guys were. I didn't have a phone, so I was just kicking it with random people. I didn't know. And yeah. All. And then we're like, bro, like, you wildin'. We're like, you wildin', like, you wildin', bro. But yeah, man, that was, um, that's probably, like, the funniest thing that happened on the spring break. At least he, you know, didn't get abducted. Yeah, that was a big thing, man, because we really didn't know where this guy was. Like, we, like, we were like... Well, I hope he pops back. Well, up. hopefully the next day you would at least call the police. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, police! No, I like that. that I like to night, report a uh, abduction. Yeah, that same night, one of um, like one of our friends who was with us actually got arrested and got booked on like a public intox. So we were like, man, like yeah. he really could be in jail right now. Like you he know, probably, what I'm he like, was in jail, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to bail him out. Like you know, what I'm saying. Did you have to bail him out? Nah, nah. They oh, let him out? Actually, check, check, check. Let the chick. We did out. have to bail him out. Oh, we did have to bail him out. Yeah. So <laughs> that was how that was much a, is the bond? I don't even remember, bro. But like, yeah, that was. He was a wild guy too. He was a wild guy. Yo, too. man. Speaking of wild guys, man, I think the wildest guy I ever met was through you. Like personally knowing him. Who? I mean, as far as like, he's just you know, he's just him. Uh, your brother oh yeah your brother man this guy yeah is the most wild guy and and not in the sense that he'll go do some reckless stuff to get arrested this guy yeah. maybe his past was reckless <laughs> but this guy is a funny guy like literally he can be yeah my brother he's an interesting guy man i've learned so much he's an interesting I, guy he, i'm keeping mind you know i have him on social media but this guy i've only met him one time and it's one night we went out all together because you were in town for right me. it was a uh, wild turkey wednesday and you were like you're like yeah the day before thanksgiving you were like hey michael I got my brother in town. Is it cool if he comes with me? And I was like, you know, I never met him. I'm like, okay, yeah. Jess is my friend, so of course, yeah, you bring your brother. Right, right, right. I this guy, he didn't low key didn't even look like you. Oh yeah, he's right. taller than you, right? And, and he's more like skinny. And this yeah, guy, and yeah, he's like six. I was like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, and, and then we went to Chick Fil A. This guy for the first like thirty to forty five minutes, this guy didn't even talk. He just just sat there. Yeah, I don't. He wasn't nervous. I know that wasn't it. He yeah. was just so that he. You know, if you knew his personality, he's not going to yeah. talk to some random person he just yeah. met. But finally, by the end of the night, we got more cool. We got talking about you mm-hmm. know, whatever. He became cool. Right. And that's when his personality came out. For sure. And that's when I was like, oh, shoot, this guy. He's a guy. This guy. He's a, <laughs> like, 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 he's a guy. He's a guy. And he's out there. Like He's a guy's guy. Out, to like say this the least. guy. Most interesting man outside of your father that I've yeah. met. So that, that's a lot, of, a lot of credit to you and your whole family. And uh, it's funny that you say that because the first time that my um, boys from college, shout out B5 again, uh, we, we was out in Miami and he was out in Miami oh. too. And, um, you know, they're being my brother for the first time, so they don't really know like how he is, but... Um, no one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, no one knows how he actually yeah, is until like, you actually get to know him. They, and then, like, my brother got to talking to him and stuff like that, and just like Came you know, over. just hanging out with everybody. And then, one of my other boys was like, "Yo, like, these are two different dudes." Yeah, like, yeah, like exactly. you know, what I'm saying, like, <laughs> like yeah, but like, uh, yeah, but that's my guy though. That's yeah. my guy. That's my guy. Man. Yeah, you Shout out to, Solomon. You gotta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Solomon. Yeah. Uh, you gotta bring him back to Louisville or like wherever he's at. 
in the country at the time, yeah. we're going to go where he's at. For sure. Hey, anytime you're ready to go out to Colorado, that, let that, me know. That's high praise, man. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And, you know, he gave me some pointers about Toronto and it's about Colorado. This guy knows about everything. Yeah. I mean, I really, honestly, bro, when COVID, when COVID lets back up, like, it's like releasing like the cage. Oh yeah, well, I'm for going sure. Because I already have something lined up for California. Yep, I have someone that I got family out there too. Exactly. I'm a, I'm a, something lined up there. I you know I'm not paying for any hotel. Yeah. yeah. When the Canada when the United States border opens back up, I'm going to uh, Canada. Yeah. And then uh, for next year, just somewhere in Asia. That's all I gotta say. I'm not gonna give yeah. any details, but I actually have somewhere in Asia that I might be going. Um, so hopefully. But that's only if COVID can let up because, you mm-hmm. know, COVID right now, I have the money to go somewhere. I just can't yeah. go. And uh, it's a big problem. You know, um, I really want to go somewhere, but, you know, it's just freaking COVID-19. Yeah. That stuff. S- slowing a lot of stuff up. Y- you know, I do have a theory that I got COVID back in the day. You know, everybody says that, man. I'm really serious, everybody because, says, oh, yeah, I think I had that. Like, I'm like sure months I, ago. I, I think I had that. When you're young, you don't know if you did. I mean, fair. How, how are you supposed to know? And, like, the only time I, I got I got uh, flu in my life, I got flu for the first time in my life ever. This is back in February. So, well, well. That's, be, a, that's the same time that well beyond well, actually, I got my when, first flu. Yeah, when, yeah no, it was, it was in January I had the flu. This year? Yep. First See, flu ever. So you can have a theory too because uh, you know I never had COVID before. I never had flu, and I was like, back in February, I was like they didn't have COVID testing. Yeah. When I went to the um, the doctor, he was like, you definitely don't have strep because they yeah. did, uh, they they said you know you don't have the symptoms for that. Mm. But it's weird because you you know you don't really have the symptoms for uh, flu. You know you have uh, upper respiratory uh, yeah. breathing issues. You kind of have some weird throat issues. You know, you don't just have normal flu issues. Yeah. But then they test me for flu, and I had flu. That's what they said. Yeah. I had flu. And then, but, you know, other people have told me since then that, you know, if you test positive for flu, you won't test positive for COVID. Right. I'm thinking, like, how, where's the data that shows that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at yeah. the time, they didn't have COVID tests. So I was thinking to myself, you know, now, like, in, like, you know, May, June, July, I'm thinking to myself, Damn, I might have had COVID because how, how can I have unusual flu symptoms yeah. but then test po- positive for flu? Maybe I had, I'm sure this is possible. You can have both flu and COVID at the same time. And I'm pretty sure if I took a, if I took a antibodies test today, yeah. probably at some point I had COVID. I don't know if they can pinpoint the day I, I know somebody had it, who has but antibodies for COVID. You know, I'm, I'm taking myself serious. I'm not being stupid. I don't just go out and just... I hug random people nowadays. Random people. I, I wear a mask. Yeah. You know, I wear, uh, you know, I try to wash my hands more. I haven't been going around to elderly members of my family. Yeah, right, right. Because I'm taking precautions. But, you know, I have traveled to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that. You know, I do go out to Lowe's. I go to Kroger. I have right, to right, right. So right. there's a lot of chances that I could have been contracted with uh, COVID-19. Yep. And I think maybe because I already had it, then... Maybe, Maybe like I'm, you're kind I'm of like immune, immune to it. To it. Yeah. Or I didn't have it but because I have a healthy immune yeah. system already. Yeah. Maybe your that's body why knows how to battle. I, I never got it. It's durable. They're, they're ready for battle. Yeah. They're durable. Durability is a so, skill. Yeah, it is so a skill. Like, I think it I have some skills. So that's my that's my theory. Yeah. Um, and of course, nurses and people watching this can you know <laughs> yeah. uh, you know say all oh, your you know what you're saying is BS or whatever. But honestly, that's my. Uh, it's my blue collar, white collar, white collar, white collar opinion. So uh, yeah, and I've been working from home for like six months now. Right. So you know, I'm not going back to work because of COVID. So it's it's a big deal. It's a big deal. But if I'm immune to it, then right, so I can big. I can hang out with anybody. So it'll go anybody. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's wild though, man. Honestly, man, everybody claimed they had COVID. <laughs> No, I did. I probably did. I did, actually. It, I, it's just funny because... It's factual. Uh, I mean, hey, different strokes for different folks, man. Hey. For sure. Definitely different strokes, yeah. I'm looking forward to having, you know, 10, 20, next 50 person yep. get-togethers. You know, I, I'm, you know, I like traveling a lot. I'm tired of freaking being cooped up in the house, man. For sure. Even my businesses I work with in my job, like, they're all like... Is it over yet? 
Nope. Yeah. No. Nope. Hang in there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Right. What you think about girls? What do you mean? I don't know, man. Like, like whatever. Because, like, I know the minute you might. I, all I guess this is not speaking for you. The minute yeah. the minute you post a girl, you may, better be a good picture, because a lot of people, a lot of drama happens once you claim someone. That's all I gotta say. Uh, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting that you say that. Uh, I watched, no, not watched. Excuse me. I I saw a tweet uh, a few months back. They were like. Uh, don't pro- don't post until it's permanent. I forgot who said that, but it was like some. I want to say it was a uh, a verified. It was like an NFL player or something. They're like don't post until it's permanent. Right. Um. I think that's an interesting perspective. Like you know what I'm saying because um. Yeah, I mean, cause like you know, for instance, like if if you have pictures with somebody on Instagram, and then they take it down. Everybody knows something went wrong, right? Yeah. And right. then they're like, oh, so... Now you look like you're messing up in life. Yeah, and now everybody is take, is trying to take a sip of your Kool-Aid. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh she's single now? Yeah, right, right. Oh, hey. Because people nowadays with social That's media, right. like, they, they don't... They don't, like... Uh, they don't just say, oh, I'm happy for you, you know? They, usually, back in the day, when you see pictures, you know, you're in their house because you're looking at a picture frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, you can look at a picture on the internet and you can think about, okay, like, you know, what, what is he doing wrong in this picture? Yeah. Or who's this person? Oh, he, yeah. she, she doesn't like him. Let me try to get in our DMs. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. So... Man. A, lo- a lot of times, you know, if I'm talking to someone, I'm not going to... I'm not going to post anything. Yeah, because people people are plotting on you nowadays, and they could be completely I mean, anonymous about it. I mean, yeah, for sure. Like there, there's always going to be um, snakes in the grass. Like you know, what I'm saying we gotta get in. yeah. Walker Flock is at a phrase. So Walker Flock. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's always going to be snakes in the grass, bro. But like you know, different strokes for different folks. Like you know, what I'm saying there's nothing wrong with posting your significant other. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if that's you, go ahead and do it. Like, there's no harm in that, and that's cool, and that's what fits you, and, that, and that's what Christ As long as you're serious. And, 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 and I, it's fine. Yeah. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for those, everybody thinks, oh, if you don't, like, not everybody, excuse me, majority of people think, oh, if they don't post their significant other, that may, that must mean that something's up or right. or like it's not that serious or and that not that might not even be the case. Like I know people who have posted who like their first post with somebody has been their engagement pictures, and it's like oh like right like whoa like we never knew you were even dating anybody. Well, but that's not that's none of our business though. Like you know what I'm saying? Right. So I, I mean. I mean, yeah, like when you go on dates and stuff, like I don't post like, you know, pictures of like first date, second date, fifth date. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm still trying to get to know, like, do I want to like rip this person now, like, or this person's part yeah, of yeah, life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of so like, like a uh, boxing match. Yeah, you got to like figure them out, stuff like that. And then like a plus. Also, like, does your pictures mean nothing? You just post whoever? You know, some people just post a bunch of pictures, and then you see someone like, "Oh, that person's just another person." Right. But if you post, right. up, if you, I feel like the way to do it actually is to post when that person means something. So whether it's one of your boys that you you know you grew up with that you like you you care about, one of your friends, or it's a girl that you care about as well. I feel like if you're gonna make a picture, you know, a picture's memorable. You know, it, it never goes away. So. Are you going to take pictures with people that you care about? And I mean, I'm not take pictures, but like post pictures. Yeah. And that's why, I like, that's why, I like, when it comes to like social media, I try to trim down as much as I can that's opinionated or just for the moment. And yeah. I, I try to post like uh, timeless things, you know, memorable things that I can talk about. So yeah, that, that's how social media should work for me because right. people, you know, post crazy things every day from their life. Ten years from now, that's mm-hmm. gonna be still there, and then that's gonna come back and haunt them. Or so <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. You're gonna get canceled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. You know they say 2020 clear vision. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for sure. Right. Ever since 2020s happened, it's been the chaos year. 
Yeah. Now, now everybody has, has ever done anything bad, whether it's racist, violent, bad, yeah. whatever society thinks is bad, everybody's getting canceled. Everybody's getting destroyed. Yeah. Everybody's getting targeted. It's so, definitely been a uh, challenging year, though, for sure. Yeah, I mean, what, what do you think, I mean, outside of COVID, you know, with the, um, the Black Lives Matter things, are you, are you pretty... Um, You've been involved at all or, you know, supporting? Yeah, you know, um, I've, like, like as far as, like, my involvement, I've I've donated. I've donated, and um, that's probably like, just, like, my main type of involvement, though, like, as far as, like... You see what's going on, but you don't do... Absolutely. Like, like oh, I see it, and I pay attention to it. Um, speaking of that, you know, uh, Breonna Taylor's... Murderers still haven't been um, brought to justice, so we still trying to get justice for her. It's important for not only the city, but uh, just like as far as like um, the whole Black Lives Matter and equality movement as a whole. Like you know, what I'm saying it's important. So um, I just want to shed a little light on that. But yeah, man, like you know, like I've I've done had it to like a few different things, and um, but like I said, I don't. Post about it and like that because I mean, like me, I don't need recognition for doing things that I feel like is right for my soul, yeah, and doing stuff like that. But yeah, man, like you know, like that, that stuff really hits home because I am a black man, like you know what I'm saying, and like in a way, like you know, not in a way, like I am Trayvon Martin, you know what I'm saying, like that could have easily, I could have easily been me, I am a Mod Aubrey, like that could have easily been me. Could have easily been me, bro, and I, I don't. Um, and, and like it's it, it really puts a lot into uh, perspective, like you know just how fragile this life stuff is, man. Like you know like you gotta cherish every moment and everything, and like you know it's just like at any moment you can go, like yeah. like you can go for however small or unfair reason, like nobody's safe, man, and it's um and. And and since time has existed, it's been, you know, um, we uh, as like African Americans and NF people, as people of color, we've just been fighting for just like a fair shot, like just equality. That's all we want. We don't want anything more than to be treated fairly. And I feel like that's like a big mi- misconception. Like we're not asking for a special treatment. We're just asking, hey, just treat us how you want to be treated. And that's it, like you know what I'm saying, yeah, like yeah. like that's really all we're asking for, just equality. But yeah, the biggest thing for like a uh, life lesson for me is um, the golden rule, you know, treat others how you absolutely. Want to be so of course, there's there's racial injustice and there's um, br- police brutality and things mm-hmm. that need to be corrected. For me, it, it's it's like there's uh, everybody can do better, and, and when it comes to people, when you see someone doing something bad. Yeah, everybody can point that out and you know, do a better job of pointing out someone doing something bad. Yeah, so I think I think uh, for me personally, uh, I've tried to live my life like that. You know, if I see something going bad, you know, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, gonna I'm gonna, you know, that's the hill I'm gonna die on. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna say if they're doing something that's completely unethical or wrong or racist, I'm gonna stand up for that that person yeah. who's the victim. So. I think as it, anybody should, like you know what I'm saying. Like, and that's I'm not teaching anything. That's yeah. that's what you should do. So uh, that's the hill I'm kind of dying on. I, you know, I'm not going to stand for, you know, all these other political movements going yeah. on right now, uh, Marxism and stuff. But the thing is, I'm always there for e- equality. And yeah. uh, you know, you know, you you know my background. I, I you know manual diversity. And right, I, right, right. I grew up around all races. I've had friends from all different races who I've genuinely enjoyed their friendship. Yeah. And it wasn't, they weren't like that because of their race. They were like that because of who, who they are, is the va- their values yeah. and um, their personality. So I think anybody who's still wanting the Confederate flag or, you know, thinks other races are inferior, whether you're, you know, white thinking blacks are inferior or vice versa, yeah. everybody's equal. So I'm, I'm in full support for that. And, you know, as well, I, I yeah. I support that so Yeah, for sure. And um I just feel like, you know, just like you being in your position, like yeah, like you said that you're um cool with a lot of people of color and you're best friends with people of color, you know, example like myself. I, I feel like uh you're 
your role is very vital as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, anytime you see something that that doesn't look right as far as this goes, like, you should call it out. Yeah. And you should, um, like, not expect but demand people uh, just basically treat people with fairness and equality. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because just as much as we're fighting for us, the reality is y'all need to help us fight that fight. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that's just, that's, yeah, it's, it's definitely a uh, tough times. Um, not that it, uh, that, that it always has, hasn't been tough times. We've been fighting this fight for so long, but, um, people, uh, are really starting to get just tired, just like tired, man. Like, especially cause this new day and age, um, we're seeing it more now. Um, not because it hasn't been this frequent cause it's been happening, but you know, now we got social media and we got cameras. We everybody, got phones. Everybody, everybody got a camera. Yeah, exactly. So now we're just seeing it more and it's more, and it, and it appears more prevalent and appears more common, but it's been going on, man. It's been yeah. going on. And that's what not everybody's getting like, like this has been an issue. Yeah. And the only thing I'm fearful of is, is people who take movements like that that are pure and just, yeah, and they take it and hijack it for their own um, their own power struggle. Or their own yeah, that's weird to me. Yep. So if you're a politician, either Republican or Democrat, and you're trying to take this as a, uh, a, a you know a way to say Black Lives Matter, but then use that Black Lives Matter movement to you know usher in yeah. your own political agenda yeah or like the black vote yeah like yeah like now. you know yeah like uh joe biden saying that if you're not black then you're not democrat like wh- what the hell does that mean are you yeah. just saying that just because uh you want black people to vote for you or are you actually trying to see justice and you're trying to see like, right right and so like when it comes to this whole thing right i'm all on board for uh Racial uh, justice and you know, you know all these equality, bad, equality. General, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I am against anybody who is against uh, just hijack. Whereas Trump, Biden, anybody yeah. that just wants to hijack good things for their own political justice. Right, right, right. So uh, that's why it's hard to be a voter nowadays because you don't yeah. know who to vote for. So. You know, we're, we're gonna wrap up here. I just wanted to, you know, end on a happy note or yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. a funny note. Is there something that you want to leave a last word uh, for this podcast? You know, it's been really enjoyable um, to talk to you. Yeah, man. Like you know, I just want to, uh, like, going back to ball. Like I know you're still a fan, man. Oh, yeah. Kind of, you know, sit behind his towel. It's kind of grossing me out. Uh, Plus, I'm, I'm six here, bulls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Word, I feel that. But um, oh, yeah. anyway, though, so <laughs> so I mean, basically, I'm gonna just keep playing simple. Y'all didn't make playoffs last year. Um, I mean, sure, you, sure, you can make excuses and everything, and everybody has excuses nowadays. I mean, sure, but bottom line, you didn't get the job done. <laughs> um, I'm just curious as to your thoughts and feelings going to the season, and. Um, typically, like, are you still riding with them, or have you jumped oh, ship already? You're hitting home. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you gotta hit home. Okay. So, First so off, get the message I, across. So, I've been, what's up with that? I've been a Steelers fan supporter since I was uh, since 2004. A Steelers fan supporter or a Steelers supporter? Like supporter. Okay. Right. And since 2004, yeah. that was when I was nine years old. Okay. First off. I didn't really know much about football or any in, in general. I played Pee Wee, but first yeah. off, when I first started getting NFL, you know, my dad was a Steelers fan. Yeah. I quickly grew as, you know, I was the one who played the most football in the family. Okay. I grew as a Steelers fan, and I think I enjoyed Steelers football, at least okay. the NFL in general, all the way, th- at least through college. Mm-hmm. You know, I, since then I've been really in, into soccer, but that's a different story. But at yeah. the same time, as I'm a big Steelers supporter and I'm a big Manchester United soccer supporter. That's my only two teams. I don't have any okay. other teams. And Steelers, you go back and look at my old, old videos. I have reviews. I have projected death charts. I'm a huge Steelers fan. Hey, and you go through my house, I have... I'm just... Hey, the guest bedroom you, uh, you're you at, I have a Steelers pillow. Okay, so I don't want to hear or ever get questioned again about my Steelers supporting. I just want to know My question you're... is, oh. where is your support? Because, <laughs> I knew you were going to come with because, that. Because first off... You know, we have we've had two. We've been the three Super Bowls yeah, and yeah, yeah. one two in my lifetime. Okay, and 
You know, I've supported my whole life. Yeah. Even the season before they even won the Super Bowl back in 2004. So all I gotta say to you is, you know, still, you know, the Patriots don't have a historical, you know, history to follow. But so I'm thinking, days, I'm thinking to myself, were you a Steelers? I mean, were you a Patriots fan after they started getting hot back in the day? Because in your lifetime, the Patriots were something to root for because they were the bandwagon team. The Steelers. They have history, and I appreciate history, so I support the history. It is so happened to get better over time. Okay. So all I got to say to you is, are you still supporting the Patriots now that Tom Brady left? <laughs> Let's leave it like that. You know, that's uh, – I'm glad you asked me that question. TB12. <laughs> I'm glad you asked me that question because um, I've gotten that question a few times from – Few different people, it's but an honest question. Yeah, and I'm and I'm gonna give you the same answer. That's you, the real answer. You gonna give me an honest answer? Oh, absolutely. For an honest question, okay. absolutely, absolutely. It's all about transparency. Yeah, and um, durability. <laughs> it's a skill, uh, but uh, yeah. So you know how I told you I used to hate football. I remember you told me. Yeah. So when I actually started to like football, okay. and started to not only like it and play it, but watch it. That year, guess who won Super Bowl? Ah, uh, okay. New England. And that okay. was when I was so, a kid. So you took the hottest team at the time. Okay. The, yeah, yeah. Oh, hold, okay. hold, 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 <laughs> hold, man. Hold, man. Hold, man. Hold. So, so when I first started getting in the ball, started liking it, started watching it, and then the Patriots won a Super Bowl that year. So I was like, cool. I'm going to rock with the Patriots. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And I've been that way. Ever since, but I don't know. They always been good ever since. Hold on. So you I mean, we missed the, the best, we missed the playoffs that he, one he year. Took we the best have team. Matt Castle at quarterback. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so you, you like Tim Tom Brady then, right? That's the thing. Like as I'm growing older now, it's it's more so like, am I really a Patriots fan or am I like them LeBron fans that love LeBron and like LeBron of them is like my Tom Brady. So now. Um. Oh, so, so you're a hold, Buccaneers fan? Hold, hold. I'm going to get to that, though. I'm going to get to that, though. So, friends, this upcoming season, I have a cop-out. I have a cop-out. Of course you did. I'm going to still root for the Patriots because, you know, I'm a, hey, I'm a, hey, you know, Patriots, you know. Yeah, you should be loyal to the fan base. Bill Belichick, he's a smart guy. Double um, B. Yes. And, uh, but to the Bucks. You know, I I have a teammate that plays for the Bucks, uh, Cousin Daniels from University of Charleston. So okay. of course I gotta support him, right? Yeah, yeah right. And uh, also shout out John Kaminsky too. He plays for the Falcons. It's all love, bro. But oh, yeah, so uh, uh, so why you not a Falcons fan? I'm no, I still root for the Falcons too because I want I want to see so all. Why would you support the Buccaneers? Um, Brady has a little bit more kick to it, you know. So you'll support, you will less support your friend at the Falcons. No, that's not the case at all. Okay, that's I'm just trying to figure this out because I feel like you're, I feel like you're supporting the, you know, picking favorites. <laughs> that's what I feel like. What I'm saying is that the Patriots are my team. I will root for the Buccaneers because I am a Brady fan, and I don't know if I'm a more of a Brady fan than I was a Patriots fan. That's to be determined. But I know oh, I'm God. for sure root for the Buccaneers as well as the Falcons because. I've played with two of those guys that's on our team, and they're and uh, they're two teammates of mine. Okay, so so, so uh, you rooting for the, it was it was established that <laughs> on record they're rooting for the team you 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 root for the team that wins. No, do you like win? <laughs> Who doesn't like winning? Okay, so you you like winning. if you did if you told me right now I don't like winning I'd slap you. So you like winning. Absolutely. Who doesn't like winning? All right, there we go. Got the camera. A- he said, "Absolutely." I, who doesn't like winning? Okay, so what right. is what does bandwagon mean? It what mean, band ma- What bandwagon means? Bandwagon means you support the team the most that's winning the most. So if you support the Patriots, who wins the most over the last decade, by definition. You're a bandwagon fan. I haven't jumped ship though, but what you have to also but acknowledge. But no, no, no new team sir, has taken over. Sir, sir, and that's all fine. And the only team that's won Super Bowls, yeah. multiple Super Bowls since the Patriots been winning, is the Steelers. So unless you're a Steelers fan, which Hold. I'm, I welcome you on board. Hold. You're either a bandwagon fan Hold. for the the Patriots. Hold, but like I said, it's before, one of the two. Though, Pick a team. I 
I I pick joined, a team. I joined the Patriots fan base when I was a kid. So okay, when they were winning. When I was a kid, I joined the Patriots fan base. That's all I'm gonna say. About. From your words, they won the Super Bowl that year. Yeah, they did. So you're supporting? Okay, you won, you're supporting the winning team. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying my first year starting to watch ball, I supported the Patriots, and I and my support has been continuous since then. That's what I'm saying to you. Yeah, right. and that's the only thing because they've been continuous. You know, no. Nah. If, if you take a, se- a seven year old who became a, a Golden State Warriors fan right. back in 2012 or whatever, yeah, 13. You know, it makes sense, you know, the winning team. And then they keep on being a Warriors fan. You're yeah. like, damn, why, why are they staying on the same winning team? Because, yeah. you know, other teams are doing good now, too. Right, right, right. It's because they're probably they're a bandwagon fan. So, and like I say, and, and that's your perspective, and that's okay. And, and my cousin, you know. One of the great things about opinions is that everybody can have one. Yeah, but some people have more factual opinions. And my cousin, who, who was a bandwagon fan... And I accused him of it, and he denied it. You know what happened when when uh, when Tom Brady left the Patriots? I asked yeah. him, "Who you like in the NFL?" I tried to act like I was stupid, like I, I forgot. You like? Yeah. He was like, "Oh, I like the Buccaneers." <laughs> so I thought I gotta say is that maybe, maybe uh, we'll, yeah. we'll see in three years from now. We'll see what uh, hoodie, what what hat you're wearing, what what Monday night football game you're watching. Yeah, I mean, we will see, and uh, you know, only time will tell, man. Only time will tell yeah. for so. sure. Well. You know, coming up here soon, maybe next month, we're gonna have some uh, my my first EP being released uh, with uh, about four to five tracks, maybe. And uh, maybe. And uh, I don't know what you want to go by. Uh, I don't know if you want to make it official, but uh, I will have this man on a couple of tracks, and I think uh, people are gonna like it. It's coming on Spotify and Apple. We'll see, man. We'll see. We'll so, see. You excited for it? Uh, yeah, man. You know, I got a couple of thoughts in the vault. So yeah, a couple of notes on the iPad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Drake with the Blackberry with the side groves. Yeah. So, so yeah. you know. We'll leave it with the what's the what's your favorite Drake line? Um, man, uh well, what's the first that comes to mind? You know, no, nah, I got a favorite Drake bar. Okay. Drake said, um, "Reality checks never cover the balances due." No, he says, too bad reality checks don't cover the balances due. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's a lot I think that's a lot of uh, food for thought. Um that's actually a caption of mine on IG. Um but if anybody follows me on IG, they know that like a What's lot your of IG? O underscore V underscore O J U S T. So like O V O Jess. Yeah, so we got the uh the most loyal Drake fan. If he's not going to be loyal to the Patriots, he'll be loyal to uh, the <laughs> uh, Drake. Chill. So that sounds good. Chill. All right, we'll leave it there.